Ladies and gentlemen, picture this. It's 1966. Bell bottoms are in, the Beatles are ruling the charts, and somewhere in General Motors' secretive labs, a bunch of engineers are looking at a Chevrolet Corvair and thinking, you know what this needs? A thousand pounds of batteries and absolutely no range. Welcome to the story of the Electrovair 2, the electric car you never knew existed, and GM definitely wanted you to forget. But before we dive into this tale of 1960s electrification, let's take a moment to remind you to hit that subscribe button. We've got electric cars, wild concepts, and probably the only place where you'll hear a car review and stand-up comedy in the same breath. Now back to the Electrovair. So, why did General Motors decide to electrify the Corvair? Well, for one, they had a lot of them sitting around after Ralph Nader's book, Unsafe at Any Speed made buyers more nervous than a cat at a dog show. The Corvair was also light by 1960s standards at about 2,500 pounds, 1,134 kilograms. That made it the perfect guinea pig for an experiment in battery-powered driving. The Electrovair 2 was based on the 1966 Chevrolet Corvair Monza four-door hardtop. Gone was the rear-mounted 2.7-litre flat-six engine, replaced with an AC induction motor churning out 115 horsepower. To put that in perspective, the base Corvair had 95 horsepower and the top trim model had 140 horsepower. So at 115 horsepower, the Electrovair was, well, let's call it adequate. The motor was juiced by a 532-volt silver oxide battery pack, neatly stuffed under the front hood where the trunk normally lived. Now, let's talk weight. The Electrovair packed on an extra 1,000 pounds, 454 kilograms, bringing it up to about 3,500 pounds, 1,588 kilograms, right in Chevrolet Impala territory. But that's still a featherweight compared to a modern Tesla Model S, which tips the scales at over 14,300 pounds, 1,950 kilograms. Performance-wise, it was slow, but not disastrously so. It took 16 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, 97 kilometers per hour, about the same as the base Corvair. However, it topped out at 80 miles per hour, 129 kilometers per hour, which was sluggish compared to the gas-powered version that could hit 93 to 108 miles per hour, 150 to 174 kilometers per hour, depending on the trim. But here's where things get truly comical. The range? General Motors optimistically claimed 40 to 80 miles, 64 to 129 kilometers. That's assuming you weren't running the radio, the headlights, or rolling down the windows too fast. But the real kicker? The silver oxide batteries were about as durable as a chocolate teapot. They could only be recharged 100 times before giving up on life. That meant a total vehicle lifespan of 4,000 to 8,000 miles, 6,437 to 12,875 kilometers, just slightly more than a cross-country road trip. Now, you might be thinking, was this ever meant for production? Oh, absolutely not. General Motors built this thing purely to show off to journalists and say, look, we can make an electric car, before promptly shelving the idea for another 20 years. By the late 1960s, fuel economy regulations were coming in hot and General Motors shifted its focus back to squeezing more miles out of gasoline engines. Their next real attempt at an electric vehicle? The EV1, three decades later. And what happened to the Electrovair? Amazingly, it survived. Unlike many concept cars that end up as scrap metal, the Electrovair 2 was preserved and is currently on display at General Motors Renaissance Center in Detroit. So, if you ever want to see what 1960s electric ambition looked like, it's right there in all its underwhelming glory. Now, if you liked this story, hit the like button, share it with your car-loving friends. And for just one United States dollar a month, you can become a sponsor of our channel, cheaper than a gallon of gas and way more entertaining. The link's in the description. Go check it out.